Hello and welcome to round one back nine coverage of the 2020 Played Against Sports Jonesboro Open. This coverage is presented by Prodigy Disc. And once again, Big Barry commentary bringing you all the action. From Jonesboro, Arkansas, Jeremy Colling, joined by my buddy Paul Hulaberry. That's right, and we have, uh, we have a couple of decent rounds coming in off the front nine here. Obviously, Garrett Gerthy at four under. You're hanging tough at three, another three, and then I'm hanging in there at one, but this back nine's where we need to make a move. Yeah, actually not too many pars for the card. A lot of birdies, quite a few bogeys in the front nine. Everyone's got at least one red number, but and we're playing catch up right now with Paul Macbeth with that hot seven under front nine. That is an incredibly, uh, that's an incredible score in the front nine. Hole 10, par three, 360 feet. See, a, it looks like it's a good forehand hole, but the right, the left to right slope really makes a lot of these forehands skip really far down the hill. You're going to see a lot more backhand turnover plays trying to get that counter skip off the hill. Yeah, and it's a tough wind, actually. It's right to left wind, which means if you get it over, it's actually not going to lift. It's going to drop it like just like you see right here. Yeah. So you want to keep it on a hyzer, and then when it gets halfway, maybe drift. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to be dunzo. Dunzo and diving left or right into the ground. Chris going with his FX2, and you're going with your... Most stable disc of all time. Your buzz, I believe. No, that's actually a stalker. Oh, yeah. okay. Just an absolute misrelease. Do you have a purple buzz in your bag? I do. Okay, because that confuses me which one that is. Okay. You've never seen me throw the purple buzz. Got it. This is my Star Wraith. Just trying to focus on keeping it left as much as I can because once it starts going right, it doesn't want to stop. Interesting, because when I was back there, I'm like, this thing's got a chance to go in, and it's yeah. a little bit blind there, but mm -hmm. you're a little bit right. You'll make the correction and get a little dinger. I, yeah, I, I love the result. I mean, putting on this hole, especially if you can putt up the hill, that's about the best spot you can be on the green. Yeah, no, I'm talking about second round, maybe get a little... Oh, a little ace job. That's gotcha. Right. Garrett kind of going a little bit wider than I was expecting to see with his T-Bird. Didn't quite get the turn he was looking for, but sets him up for a nice little AVR X3 saucy approach. Yeah, he gets a kind of a bitter kick to the right, but it uh, really was it. I mean, I don't think that had a great I, result. It didn't look like it in, was going to turn. Yeah, in right. its flight. Mm -hmm. So left, right, tomato, tomato. He's, <laughs> he's getting a par. Thank you. Isn't that weird? My disc's right here and it didn't hit anything. It goes 370 feet and then 60 feet directly right. I don't know. This is the, this is what you always talk about when I birdie a hole. You, <laughs> I've always got something to say about it. You're like, how did this happen? This doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> it was a bit strange. You can't really see it from the camera angle here, but like, it's like it got to the corner and just somebody threw it 70 feet right. And from my perspective, I, I could have walked to your disc and just been like, putted it and been like, yeah, that's where my disc landed. <laughs> I know, I, I don't look at things that way. <laughs> I wish I had a little bit more of that in me. Hole 11, par four, 560 feet around, down the hill and around the corner to the left, kind of a double dog leg as you wanna get down to this fairway here. Try not to push it too deep because it really cuts off the angle for the forehand or backhand turnover approach. Mandatory initially off the tee box, forcing people to go straight. That was done because Simon Lazat was just going huge Anheuser and getting putts at the hole in the past. This is just perfect. Nice lift too in the middle of the flight to just throw it down that fairway on the left. Great shot. Star Destroyer for me there I can't help but think that this would play as one of the easier holes on the course but it comes out in at the 13th most difficult or, mm -hmm. so Chris Dickerson really in love with that FX2 going with that there again a little bit different line as you go with the is that your nuke OS that is yeah just keep it out of the wind get around that corner and that sets up a really nice wide open forehand approach and 
and the difficulty with where I am is I'm a bit too long to have that nice shot. I kind of have to do like a stall shot, whereas you can just kind of go directly at it. Garrett trying to go a high hyzer with his halo wraith and that is just too inside but look at that gets through everything yeah he throws a spike hyzer <laughs> through the middle of the biggest tree you'll ever see and he's going to be right next to me and that's why we were calling him what were we calling him the sheriff the new sheriff in town no he said well I, long got, arm the, of the law? I got the long arm of the law <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, yeah, well, that's he what, said power, that's will what power will get you yeah, yeah. uh-huh so that's a saying avery jenkins you see use it use a lot Garrett going back to his Alex Geisinger Firebird and a very nice approach that is a very very overstable Firebird this is your Raptor go in go in come on go in. Oh, oh no dude no but it went in I think <laughs> it oh. went in I saw the chain promise. Oh. Oh. In and out. I got uh. bamboozled. What the heck? <laughs> Man, that was crazy seeing that from that angle. It went through the backside of the cage yeah. and kind of ramped its way back out. Yeah, we didn't really we did, we couldn't see it because yeah. of this blind little little mm -hmm. back door here, so you can't see it. We could just hear it. Yeah. And the way that it sounded, I thought I made it. I really did. Yeah. There we go. God, this little thing was right in the way. Oh no, another another complain oh, birdie. birdie. <laughs> Shut up. Huh? Complain birdie. Cry, cry, cry eyes. Cry eyes. <laughs> did you hear what I said? I said shut up. Yeah. Oh man, just let me complain about my birdies, please. Mm -hmm. Jeez. I had a good friend. His name was Josh, and back in the day, I used to whine about everything, and he'd be like, oh, Bar cry eyes. Barber? No, no. Oh, okay. Um, he used to say, oh, I got cry eyes in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best way to describe whine and cry eyes in your brain. <laughs> That's a nice touch. <laughs> Nice star frame again for our feature group. More money thrown into the charity pot. Well, 12 par four, 655 feet. Not really a decision to make as far as what you're trying to do. You're trying to crush one across that creek, but there is out of bounds at the bottom of the hill. How close you get to these trees is really up to you from there because the closer you get, the more difficult approach is on that second shot and this basket is the slopiest mound on the course pretty tricky little par four and we had a little bit of a head right to or left to right and once that disc started turning over it just never had a chance just pushing it down the whole way and that is a pretty huge mistake to make on this one And Chris making the height adjustment. One mistake was throwing it too low. You got to make sure you get the height to clear that ditch. And that's enough sauce to get across. Catch a little saying I just made up. Didn't even know I was doing it. That is a nice little saucy to get across the. Carrot. <laughs> <laughs> just an, actually just enough sauce to get across. Yeah, just I was yeah. I just I was hugging that tree a bit. I'm gonna have to flatten that out a bit tomorrow for sure. And this guy goes over. It just as. I I think it's my favorite thing in the game to watch Garrett throw anhyzers. He somehow can throw it 600 feet with the nose down the whole way. It just is a slow left to right glide. It's just a thing of beauty. And you see that ditch that I went out of bounds in? Garrett crosses it by 200 feet. Yeah, I that's mean, just like, and he went over the tree that I almost hit. It's unreal. And I took a lot of space back to give myself a nice hyzer angle. 
uh, and I totally misjudged that the mistake to make would be missing it down the hill. So I'd have an uphill putt and I just misread the wind. And now I've got to be 65 feet away and I got to lay that one up for a bogey. And that was a nice approach from the bottom of the hill. Yeah, no, I was, I was honestly in love with it and pleasantly surprised with where it ended up. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter how good your drive is on this hole, unless you're Ezra Adahold, who almost parked it the day before in the skins match, you're not going to be able to see the pin on your second shot. Right. So these shots right here to have three putts for birdie in the circle is truly impressive. Was that a pure layup or, or a maybe? No, that was a pure layup. Yeah. There was no, no, no point in trying to save the par from 65 feet on a windy mound. And that's an incredibly scary putt from the edge of the circle. That's a great birdie for Chris. And also a nice birdie for Garrett on the sixth hardest hole of the day, coming in at a 4.18 average. So getting just a bit more than a stroke on the field, picking up birdies on hole 12. On the hole 13, 353 foot par three. Up and around the hill. And it just really, you have to stand there on the tee box to appreciate how awkward this angle is. The basket is completely blind from the tee box. There is a back door forehand up and over the hill. That's a secondary option, but you're gonna see at least 80% of the field, if not more, go for this kind of nose up hyzer with a driver play that you're going to see Chris throw right here. He wants something that comes out on hyzer that then, then pushes exactly like his did and then doesn't uh -huh. get this little slow roll backwards. Still a solid shot. I mean, just kind of punked on that result. It looks so perfect out of his hand. Once again, another FX two from Chris. Garrett, that is just, I mean, you got to keep it tight, but that's that's a bit too much for Garrett, and he's got to save a very tough par now. Yeah, come on. Absolutely perfect, beautiful. And you know, if there's a way to do it, I'm gonna do it. That's right, little sidearm. Back door turnover, just needs to clear the hill and not get the big skip. Not a bad skip. Yeah, Probably sure. not the power, maybe maybe different disc tomorrow. Yeah, I, I thought that that might have enough to get there. I was worried about going too far right. Now I know that it's got to be just a little bit more turn. And the camera doesn't really catch it, but Garrett was pinched off there to where he couldn't make a full swing. He makes a full swing, he hits his hand, he doesn't full swing it, and he still throws a great shot. Yeah, so that was... shout out to him for making sure that he didn't end his career. <laughs> yeah. And look like one of those clubs that had nails attached to it yeah. at the tree that was right in front of him. There are some big time sticker bushes out here. I was truly convinced that that thing was in there. Going in. Garrett with a really, really nice par save. That's a great birdie. I, I am truly surprised to see how many birdies were picked up. 26 players out of the 93... <laughs> players in the field 
over a quarter of the field was able to pick up a birdie in this hole. And I, I don't know if the hole's gotten easier since I was here last in 2018 or not, but I mean, it's, I remember this one being almost a bonus with how tricky that angle was. It has, it has trimmed up high. It okay, that, maybe that's to, what it yeah, was. Yeah, you used to have to throw it a lot okay. lower, and there was branches on the right that came out wider, so it was a really tight shot. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like it's gotten a little easier, but... Yeah, and, and the field took advantage of that with the great scores throughout the day. Hole 14, 520 feet. One of the most fun tee shots on the course. Up to the elevated pin sitting there on top of the log. Going ESP nuke. No, 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 you, Lee, why would you do that? So fun. One of the funnest oh, holes to throw so bad, right here. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's a tough one. Not just because you're going to be out of bounds and 250 feet from the pin, but it's just so much fun to watch the disc fly on this hole and not getting the opportunity to at least just have a chance at a birdie is just... It's kind yeah. of devastating. So where Garrett's landed right there, that's really where I was aiming. I needed mm -hmm. I needed the disc to come out on that angle and then do the drift, flight, flex back. And Garrett makes a good correction and makes a pro mistake by throwing something stable enough, not going to flip over like mine did. And, and once again, Dickerson going FX2, just throwing fairway drivers all over this big course down here and just throwing another great one. Setting himself up for maybe a 46-foot putt for birdie. And I'm reading Tailwind, so I'm going with my flippiest destroyer. Seeing Garrett Heiser out with that Wraith makes me think that this might be a good play. And uh, that's... Uh, I threw a roller. I mean, that's <laughs> such a bad shot. I couldn't even believe it. <laughs> This is a total misread on the wind and an absolute shank of a shot too at the same time. And this is your ringer? That's my ringer. I get a, I get a nice reaction mm -hmm. off those limbs. It could have very easily just kind of popped me down, left me about a 40 footer, but I said, you know what? You're horrible at 40 footers. We'll give you the nice little 20 That was footer. very nice of the trees to do that yeah. for you. Yeah. And Garrett kind of a little bit unfortunate with that sonic approach to do that little roll because now he has got a very challenging 25-foot putt for the birdie. And this par. is the longest 75-footer I've ever seen. Did that, that was – I mean, this is a – Yeah, this is yeah, – 40. A, it might play at 75 since it's on the high rise for sure. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, we'll, we'll call it 45 and a really great birdie and a good mm -hmm. 45 to get. And that's – that's Desperman's currency right there. Yeah, we both were, were saying we, we were not at all surprised to see Chris make that putt. He was due to make a nice circle two. And look at that yeah, semi back interesting, to your yeah. basket. Like, <laughs> yeah, straddle out to your left. He's a hyzer putter, so he has to go from his left foot and then try to get it to the right side of the basket because he has to hyzer, right? And so that's just, that's just a tough putt and well done. That's a five-star par save. His first back-to-back -back in 2019, Disc Golf Pro Tour champion, Chris Dickerson. He's kind of a great player, that Chris Dickerson. I putted while that commercial was going, so I feel like it might be my time. Maybe. Might be my time soon. Oh, my goodness. Whatever. Hole 15, par 3, 270 feet. Just across the hill. Really sets up as a... Nice little opportunity to give a little Spike Kaiser ace run. The only problem with that, though, is that right to left slope can yield a really long comeback putt if you don't have a nice knife angle coming into that green. Chris Dickerson is on a nice little streak right now. He sure is playing. Yeah, six out of the last eight holes, mm -hmm. birds. Going with his AX3 and just putting the brakes on it. That is a, that's a gem. And uh, that'll be another birdie. See if Garrett can learn something from his in the line. This looks pretty good. A rock three coming in hot. Oh, it's in there. Let's go, dude. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I pulled it back. <laughs> I did it. Did it stay? Yeah. Yes. I did it again. Oh, my God. I did it. <laughs> that I did it again. <laughs> Dead never... center. Thank you. Was that a getter? 
That was a rock three. Rock three? Oh, yeah. Here you go, bud. <laughs> wow, that was a lot of chaos. Uh, yeah, that dude. was chaos after that, man. I'm not... I, okay, so cool. Like Garrett throws a beautiful shot and he gets the ace. But what I want people to pay attention to is the high five double fist dodge that you did after Garrett goes back. Like you almost made contact with another person in COVID times, but you dodged immediately. I'm quick. I'm a quick study. <laughs> it was such an incredible shot. <laughs> Stack it. Oh, God. That was so <laughs> close to going in, too. Dude, you hit that thing so center. Oh, that was so sweet. You think I've seen two aces on this hole that I would know how to do it, too. And that's actually my first tournament shot with my new 2020 Thunderbirds. Shout out to Innova Tour Series program. Garrett. Garrett told me his dad's in the hospital and he, and he told him yesterday that, hey, I'm going to hit an ace for you tomorrow. No way, dude. Did you? Really? Yeah, absolutely. And he does it. So. Yo, dude, you can't be pulling my heartstrings right now, man. I got to focus on commentary. That's insane. That is so fantastic. That's just Gary Gr Gary Gerthy stuff right there. That shot was not coming in for a layup. He was not playing this shot for a, for a par. I mean, for a birdie. That was coming in with heat. And Gar with Garrett's touch, that was not an accident. That dude was running the ace on purpose, telling his father he was going to get an ace. That's Seriously? right. Dude, that's amazing. Wow. And and because of the ace, we aren't giving any money to charity. <laughs> that's, a, that's a galaxy friend. That's one better than perfect. We got the... Uh, we kidding, we kidding, we kidding. We giving it all away. <laughs> Three birdies and an ace on hole 15. Unbelievable stuff there. Wow. Hole 16, par 5, 855 feet. It's amazing how this hole can feel like it's a par 4 sometimes, and sometimes it can feel like it's a par 6 you can run into some problems. This is one of the most beloved holes on this course and it can be a nightmare with just one bad shot. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great par 5 because distance isn't the biggest factor. It's it's where you land and then your decision making after that. Like Garrett throws it further than anybody else on the planet pretty much and the further you throw it here if you're not in position you have to only throw about 150 foot to yep. get back into position just to try to get birdie. And if you get a little bit aggressive after that, you go in the water and then you're guaranteed par at best. So this is a brilliantly designed par five, I believe. Chris checks up a bit shorter going with his D3, putting himself in position to go that big through the middle shot across the water and that's your nuke and that's in a very similar position as Chris as far as distance go but a little bit more to the right which opens up that gap that's between the trees a little bit more and I should have saw the wind out there in the distance and known that I was coming at us because I took my most stable destroyer truss it with a little bit of hyzer and it turned over as soon as it left my hand and that was another bad misread on the wind and paid the price for by being way out of position. And this is just one of the sickest shots you're gonna see. Jeez, Paul, that was so, so swell. Did it work? I don't know, but look for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was lucky to get through all that stuff. I don't it, see it. it seems like. I mean, we can't see anything. All we could see is that you just <laughs> barely <laughs> hugged those trees. You hugged that tree perfect. That was insane. Yeah, there you go. We can just talk about it there and here too, if you want. Why do I have? Why do I look like I've been wearing sunglasses through through a sunstorm? <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear sunglasses. That's so weird. Got somebody raccoon eyes. Me, yeah, somebody told me that. And Dickerson with an unfortunate break. Actually, he was a bit fortunate at first to hit the trees that maybe stop him from going out of bounds. Then it hits the ground, eventually rolls out of bounds, which will mean that he'll have to proceed to the drop zone. And Garrett not taking too much time to just step up and throw his Sonic into position. 
thumbs. Yeah, thumb are from a very awkward position. I have to actually like stand with my back to the basket just due to the way that the tree right in front of me is. And there's a good view of that. Has anybody just called it thumbs up? Uh, nope. And for good reason, Paul. That's pretty dumb. Well, if you throw it that bad, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> thumbs down. I actually don't like the suggestion. I just had to say something like that. That came up about 27 feet short or so, and Garrett's a similar distance just past the basket. And this is Chris. Why does Chris look like he's always going to do good? That man is focused and intense and very good at disc golf ball. That is why. Paul with a 45-foot eagle look and just a very tough wind to read coming through that hillside. And that was a nice air ball that I provided the audience with right there. And it doesn't look like it because we don't have visual effect here, but it is breezy, very yep. breezy. Yep. And that is... Why we're missing. It, yeah, a, a large part of it. Also, uh, skill is involved. No, absolutely. If it's <laughs> perfectly calm, I, I think two you out dingus. of three at least... Oh, God, you <laughs> dingus. Two out of three make that putt, I think. I was already planning on calling myself a dingus after that air ball was my first missed putt in the circle. And then I didn't realize that I almost missed a 15-foot putt for par, so it was kind of perfectly timed situation to call myself a dingus. I agree with it. But I think you could call yourself that after every shot. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> and I was actually surprised to see that 16 was only the... The middle difficulty. Normally this hole gets eaten up by the field, but... Oh, that is interesting. You are right. Not a single eagle on the day. That is very surprising. There are normally multiple threes on hole 16. Not during round one. I'm sure we'll see some more throughout the event as we move on to hole 17. We're almost done with round one. It's going by quick, man. Par four, 600, 600 feet on the dot. Oh, 660 feet. Excuse me. It's going to be a blind tee shot to an out of bounds area that just keeps on getting tighter and tighter as that fence moves its way down the fairway. You're going to want to throw a shot that pushes the right side tree line and just at the last minute hyzers into the middle. And this is pretty much exactly what you're looking to do. And that's, you couldn't really go up and place it in a better spot. For my power, the way that I throw, yeah, I, I think you're right. That's that's as good as it's going to get, especially in the conditions we had. And Garrett's going with this Cheshire Cat Star Wraith Roller, and that wind really picked it up and pushed it way too far right. But, man, he has got so much power. If that misses that tree there, that could have just kept rolling through the woods all the way to the pin maybe. Yeah, that's just mind blowing how much power he has, and that he's 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 probably thinking that he's like, if I roll this or if mm -hmm. I land this on, on the correct angle, I might be able to get it down there for a look. And with his touch with the Sonic, yep. definitely doable. I will, I wouldn't doubt the man. And Chris, a little bit too tight with that FX two, and I was thinking maybe I could get this thing to turn over a bit. I was very very happy to see that green flag because that's where you see most people go out of bounds and. That just was too high, too stalled out, and now I'm about 370 to 380 feet back. Love it, kind of, right? I, I love it, but I don't know what it's going to do when it hits the hill. Well, then I love it. Because I love you. saucy from where I was, that's for sure. I did not hear you say, I love you. <laughs> Thank you, man. That yeah. was very nice of you. That was, uh, I was very, very, very pleased with the... Just the, the shot itself and the result was actually really nice as well. And this was looking very similar, but just catching the top of the hill and just launching I down to the just, woods. Did I just skip off your disc? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You dangus. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris is going to have to throw a very touchy FX2 cut roller. And this was looking like it had great angle, just kept hopping and never really caught the ground. And that unfortunately rolled right into the back of that bunker, and it's going to be a very difficult up and down for par for Chris. 
carrot has this real slim gap up high. And Garrett Girth is in trouble. A tomahawk. And wow, just pitching through the woods and actually pretty great result. This isn't the time for relaxation. <laughs> a relax what? Relaxation. There you go. Chris. <laughs> he's just doing, doing a modeling pose. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Like he's got a photo shoot on the beach or something, and that was a that was a really nice shot. Chris told me that's the third shot he's thrown in his disc golf career where he was completely lying on the ground. So he's practiced it before. And that was a pretty good effort with a very scary roller angle, but that sits down. Very happy with the birdie. Oh, a little inside the circle follow flight. That's beautiful putt. Or slum as, excuse me. That was a little bit of a tricky putt. Oh, absolutely. Up and over that little um, sticker bush that was kind of right over there, kind of framed it up nice for you. And one of the things about Garrett's putt, unfortunately, with coming in with that much hyzer. I, I, if he misses that low, high, right, anywhere with that much angle coming into that hillside, it's just going to roll most of the time. And that was a, a tough break for Garrett and goes from a par to a double bogey just like that. Chris, however, scrambles well and is able to save the par. Tough break for Jeeves. Had a great round at this point that drops him down to six under par. Still a great round. Sure. But just, obviously, yeah, I mean, when, when you're his caliber, that's a, that's a crushing blow to the scorecard. Sure. Hole 18, hardest hole in the course, par four, 818 feet. There are a couple different options. You can play down the right side fairway or try to move it all the way down the left side fairway going straight up the gut, or you can go that big high hyzer play but either way, no matter what you do, you're going to have an incredibly challenging second shot, even after a very well-executed tee shot. So important to hit this gap. Go star wraith, and I really needed to kick out of the woods, and that was just super fortunate. There is out of bounds all the way down on the left side. You're going with your ESP nuke. And that headwind does not make this hole any easier. Really can't do it much better than that. I mean, that is just, if you're going for the right side hyzer approach, once again, I think two holes in a row, you can't walk down the fairway and put it in a better spot. No, there's not, there's not going to be a, yeah. I'd pay, I'd pay... Hundred bucks to be able to place my go drive up there, there and put it all there. three rounds. I pay three hundred <laughs> easy. <laughs> Chris goes with his D two and and looked really great out of his hand. It, maybe just they needed to go a little bit lower. Got, got stalled out by the wind a bit and came up a bit short. And now he's going to be in that briar patch. I believe there's briars down there. Just one of the most impressive disc throwers I think that there's ever been in the sport. Character. I don't think anyone's ever put more spin on a disc. Yeah, I, I, it's it's hard to think that there's somebody out there that throws the disc the same as that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, that just it, the way that he does it, his style, unmatched. Absolutely, and and to top it off, the style he brings to it as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't you can't match that he form makes... with any other person. It just he owns it, and he's. Made, made a career out of made it, a really. Great career yeah. out of it, lifetime. Chris, that was a very, that's an underrated level of difficulty on that approach. Made that look easy, was not. Nuke. Yeah. And that's a great shot to about twenty-eight feet left for the birdie. Nuke OS. 
Oh, new class. Yeah. Okay. And Garrett being afforded the opportunity to go back with that rock three that he threw in on hole 15. And that nestles up to about 22 feet left. lining up this one and thinking I want to maybe give this a little effort here to try to go in didn't really scare the basket but scared scared me <laughs> you're easily frightened my friend yeah How does that lift? Gotta be kidding me. I'll be joining anger management after, <laughs> after this round. <laughs> Garrett, uh, that's a great bounce back after the double bogey birdieing the hardest hole on the course. 4.74 average, just brutalizing players all day long. Guess how many people birdie the hole? <laughs> Thomas Gilbert was the only one to do it. Two birdies on the day. I know you're looking at that like, I don't want to know that right now because <laughs> you had a great look at it, but really showing how difficult this hole is. I mean, even after two fantastic shots, still left with a difficult 30-foot putt, and the wind was just relentless all day on the greens. Garrett Gerthy and Chris Dickerson able to shoot seven unders on the feature group here. Great starting rounds for those two, and not too bad for us either as well. It was coming at five under and four under for the round. Respectable rounds for sure. Take a look at that leaderboard. My goodness, fire emojis for Paul McBeth and Calvin Heimberg, who birdied eight of the back nine, I believe. Back nine snack time for sure. Incredible rounds there. Some hot action out on the course as we are here at the Disc Golf Pro Tour season finale. Garrett grabbing that beautiful ace out of the basket. First round thoughts, Paul? I think it I think it gave everything that we, we could possibly learn about the course. I mean some bogeys obviously and sure. then we even got an ace in there. I think tomorrow You're we're gonna see yeah, we're gonna see a lot of the same. Maybe a couple hot rounds, maybe a couple people struggle, but that's what Jonesboro is all about. Thanks again to the Founders Club. Thank you for tuning in. Check back tomorrow. My birthday. <laughs> see you then. <laughs>